I am Dr. Ajay. Today we will have a short discussion, short discussion, just a 10 minutes discussion on very important chapter the triangles in our ear. Okay, the triangles in our ear. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about two important triangles. One is a McEwen's triangle, other is a Trotman's triangle, and there are some other triangles which are important for your entrance exams also, which I will explain now. Okay, so so the first one we will deal with the McEwen's triangle. So, what is McEwen's triangle? McEwen's triangle is a what is McEwen's triangle? Why it has been uh, why it is important here? It is the McEwen's triangle is a surgical landmark for master antrum. This we all know. It is a surgical landmark for approaching the master antrum. So, if you want to approach the master antrum, the surgical landmark is the McEwen's triangle. Okay. So, 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 what are the boundaries of McEwen's triangle? So, when we assess our uh, our ear, okay, we know that mastoid is in this area. Mastoid is behind the ear, right? So, in the mastoid area, we need to have in mind the triangle, the uh, three lines. Okay, first line is the first line is the temporal line. It's called as a temporal line. Otherwise called as a supramatal line, whatever. Okay, temporal line or the supramatal line, where the temporalis muscles will come and get attached. Okay, say if the temporalis muscles are like this, they are coming and getting attached like this. Okay, so this line is called as a temporal line. So where is the temporal line? So this is a we know that this is a zygomatic arch, right? This is a zygomatic arch. When the uh, this is an say this will be the zygomatic arch here. The line which extends beyond the zygomatic arch. Okay, just draw a line. Just draw a line extending beyond the zygomatic arch. This is the temporal line. Okay, when you feel like this, this is the temporal line. Temporal line is the superior boundary. Superior boundary. Okay, so when the it is an extension from the zygomatic arch. Okay, and the line drawn just as an extension from zygomatic arch, where the temporalis muscles will temporalis muscle will be here. Right, they will come and get attached. That is called as the temporal line or the supramatal line. Okay, that is mark this as a A. Okay, and the second line is the. Say one minute. I will just change it. So ma assume this as an external artery canal. Assume this as an external artery canal. We know that this is the external artery canal, right? When we cut and throw the pin off, okay. When we pull the pin off, friend, we know that this will be the external artery canal, right? This will be the anterior wall. This will be the posterior wall. Okay. So second line. Okay, what we are going to do is we are going to draw a line along the posterior posterior boundary of the external artery canal. So along the posterior boundary of the external artery canal, draw a line. Okay, draw a line. This is the external artery canal. This is the anterior. This is posterior. So draw a line along the posterior boundary of the external artery canal. Okay, and the third line mark this as B. Okay, and the third line is nothing but the third line mark a tangential line connecting these two lines. Okay, mark a line which is tangential, connecting these two lines. That is C. Okay, so if we drill in this area, if we are going to drill in this area, we are going to approach the triangle that is that is McEwen's triangle. Clear? A, B, and C. Okay, so line A is the Temporal line, which is an extension from the zygomatic arch. This will be zygomatic arch. Okay, now there is no pinna. This will be an extension from zygomatic arch. So this line, we can feel for it. We can feel for it. The line, in the line, just as extension from zygomatic arch is a temporal line where the temporalis muscles will come and get attached. Okay, the second line is this part, the posterior, posterior, posterior boundary of the external artery canal. Bony external artery canal. The external artery canal, not the cartilaginous part. The cartilaginous part is here outside. The posterior boundary of the bony external artery canal. Okay, and the third line is a tangential line connecting these two lines. Tangential line connecting these two lines. Third line. Okay, so this is called as McEwen's triangle. Never forget this. Very very important questions for your pre-final exam. Without knowing this, we can't appear in the exams. Okay, and a very important question even your entrance exams. Entrance exams, the they have asked all of the following will will contribute to McEwen's triangle except. Okay, all of the following are parts of McEwen's triangle except. Okay, so this is how they are going to ask in the question, ask in the uh, exams. Okay, so and what is it? What is it? It is a, it is a 
surgical landmark for mastoid antrum. It is a surgical landmark for mastoid antrum. So, when we are just drilling in this area, when we just drill in this area, we, uh, we the mastoid antrum will open at one point. So, that is the importance of McEwen's triangle. Usually, the mastoid antrum will be lying at a depth of around 1.5 centimeter from this, so, uh, from the boundary. Okay. So, this is McEwen's triangle. Fine. So, what is the second triangle? What I said? The Trotman's triangle. Again, this is very important for your pre finals. I am uh, they won't ask much question in this, but but in your entrance exam, this is very very important question. The Trotman triangle. So, what happens in a Trotman triangle? What is Trotman triangle? Trotman triangle is nothing but it is the posterior approach to the to the posterior cranial fossa. So, what happens is say I am drawing a picture of the post cortical mastoidectomy cavity. Okay, this is middle ear. Okay, this is a mastoid cavity. Assume this as a mastoid cavity. Okay, so now we have drilled over the uh, we have we have done a cortical mastoidectomy. Already we have done a cortical mastoidectomy. So while doing a cortical mastoidectomy, what is our role? We want to approach the mastoid antrum. So we know we have approached the mastoid antrum here. So this is the mastoid antrum. Okay, and uh, just above the this and all we will discuss in the above uh, after chapters also. So the anatomical landmark just above the mastoid antrum, we know that there will be a semicircular canal. That is a lateral semicircular canal. Okay, and we know that how many semicircular canals are there? We have three semicircular canals: superior. Okay, there will be a superior semicircular canal. There will be a lateral semicircular canal. There will be a posterior semicircular canal. Okay, so these are the three semicircular canals: superior. Posterior and lateral semicircular canal. The landmark for mastoid antrum will be the mastoid antrum. When we just open the, the mastoid antrum, the one semicircular canal which lies uh, as a as a boundary or as a landmark for the mastoid antrum when we are drilling it is the lateral semicircular canal. When we are drilling, once we approach the once we see the lateral semicircular canal, we need to be very careful with it so that we have opened up the mastoid antrum. Okay, so. So, we have three semicircular canals as we discussed okay. and uh, what is cortical mastoidectomy? It is the surgical eccentration of all accessible mastoid arses. So, here we are drilling over all the mastoid arses, all the mastoid arses and what are the boundaries for a cortical mastoidectomy? Okay. We know that the posterior boundary there will be a there will be a sigmoid sinus will be there in the posterior boundary. In the posterior boundary there will be a sigmoid sinus. Okay. And superiorly, superiorly there will be a tegment plate which separates the which separates the mastoid and the middle ear from the middle cranial fossa. Okay. So, this will be the dura, there will be a tegment plate and the dura. Okay. Inferiorly, there will be a tip. Okay. So, these are the boundaries for a cortical mastoidectomy. But now, we are in the Trotman triangle. So, what is Trotman triangle? It is nothing but, it is nothing but in the same picture. Okay. What happens is here this is sigmoid sinus, here there will be a communication from the sigmoid sinus here okay, that is called as the superior petrosal sinus. So, here there will be a superior petrosal sinus which will superior petrosal sinus which will come and drain into the into the sigmoid sinus. Okay. So, this triangle this triangle between the okay, mark this. So, between the so, uh, bony labyrinth superior petrosal sinus and the sigmoid sinus is called as Trotman's triangle. Okay. So, so mark these points, this is the Trotman's triangle. So, Trotman's triangle is bounded now, how it is bounded? How it is bounded? It is bounded, it is bounded superiorly, how it is bounded? Okay. It is bounded superiorly by the, what, what, what forms superiorly? Superiorly by the superior petrosal sinus. Okay. Posteriorly by the posteriorly by the sigmoid sinus, okay. anteriorly by the anteriorly by the bony labyrinth. Okay. This is Trotman's triangle. Never forget this, never forget this. Very easy, very easy chapter. Okay. So anteriorly bony labyrinth, posteriorly by the sigmoid sinus, superiorly by the superior petrosal sinus. So, this is called as this triangle formed between these three margins is called as the Trotman's triangle. Okay. So, what is the significance of the Trotman triangle? What is the significance of Trotman triangle? Any infection in this area, any infection in this area, 
okay so if the patient is suffering from mastitis severe mastitis if the uh, if the infection can enters into the strotman triangle okay it can easily turn into cerebellar abscess cerebellar abscess so so the means it can easily go and enter into the posterior cranial fossa enter into the cerebellum through the strotman triangle so it is again a weak area through which the infections from the mastoid can enter into the posterior cranial fossa that is that is our cerebellum so for your entrance exams entrance exams a very important question cerebellar abscess following csom occurs through which triangle okay it is not mckeown's triangle it is strotman triangle a repeated mcq so as in the previous recent papers also okay uh, infection from the trotman triangle infection from the mastoid can enter into the cerebellum maybe a cerebellar abscess whatever it can spread through the trotman triangle okay so these are the two important triangles one is a mckeown triangle other is a trotman triangle okay trotman triangle very important for your entrance exam mckeown triangle very important for your pre final exams okay and there are other name triangles just have it in mind one is called as a solid angle solid angle is nothing but so we know that how many semicircular canals are there we know that there are three semicircular canals right superior okay uh, posterior semicircular canal okay posterior semicircular canal and the lateral semicircular canal okay so these three semicircular canals won't be lying simply okay it will be lying at an angulation okay all three will be lying at an angulation okay the angle formed between the three semicircular canals the angle formed between the three semicircular canals is called as solid angle okay so solid angle is the angle formed between these three semicircular canals fine so this is another one mcq for your exams okay solid angle and one more triangle which i want to mention is the sitelis angle sitelis angle otherwise called as sino dural angle so as the name indicates what it mention sino dural so sino and dural that means that means between the sigmoid sinus between the sigmoid sinus and between the dural plate okay this is called as sino dural angle so in our picture in our picture okay i'll just change the picture i'll just draw it again so assume this as a middle ear this is the mastoid cavity okay we know that the posterior boundary is the the posterior the posterior boundary will be the sigmoid sinus post cortical mastoidectomy on the posterior bound wall of the mastoid cavity sigmoid sinus and superiorly we have a we have a dural plate or a tegment plate here okay we have a dural plate here so this this angle this will be the sigmoid sinus okay so this angle this angle between the dural plate and the sigmoid sinus is called as is called as sino dural angle otherwise called as otherwise called as sitelis angle sitelis angle is mcq they want us to sino dural angle sitelis angle is mcq so this angle is called as sitelis angle so this is a very short topic but it contains very important mcqs uh, we need to have in mind of the mckeown triangle trotman triangle just have it in mind of the solid angle and the sino dural angle also okay if you have any doubts you can just text me in my number whatsapp me in my number or you can join my if you are a pre final student or a neat pg aspirant you can join my ent page okay dr uh, dr ajay is exploring ent in telegram and facebook okay and you can join my ent app which is exclusively dedicated for pre finals and neat aspirants dr ajay ent i will give you the link, uh, link below okay dr ajay ent Okay, you can join our group here we have a master class series for the pre finals and for uh, neat pg aspirants uh, we have a image based session which is exclusively dedicated for the neat exams thank you